All right, guys. Um, so today, going to talk about a skill that um, you've already learned previously um, early in the year. Uh, but today, we're going to kind of add a, a little twist to it to where um, you won't even have to order the numbers yourself. You could do it on a calculator. All right. So um, uh, the skill that we're talking about is being able to order uh, rational or irrational uh, numbers. <clears throat> so first off, there's always steps when you're having to do something on a calculator. And you've seen this before. Um, going to look like this. Everybody's going to get it. Gonna put this in your reference chart spot on in your folder. Um, my class, I have green. Miss Bloys, I think she has blue. So, um, and before you start and say, "Hey, how am I, how am I gonna remember all these steps?" Well, it's just like when you're learning anything else, you have to do it over and over and over again, and you have lots of practice um after this so first off <clears throat> when you get a set of numbers all right we all know that to order numbers everything or every number has to be turned into a decimal all right for instance the square root of two this number right here you don't know the value of that all right and just like i always tell my class imagine you going to a to a, a, a convenience store and you walk up and you give them your candy or whatever and they tell you okay your your amount is the square root of two you won't know what to give them so you always have to turn into decimal so you can understand what the value is but the thing about this this step that these steps that you're going to learn is your calculator will do all the work for you all right you just got to know these steps so first off, first step is to push stat one. All right, so I'm going to go there. All right. Push stat one. So I'm going to go to stat. It's right here. I'm going to push it. One will, tell, will send me to the edit button. So I'm going to push number one. And now it gets me to my list. All right. Next thing is to enter in each number. So, again, I'm going to go, and the thing about this, what you will need to do is, once you enter in the numbers, your calculator will tell you what it is in decimal form. So, for instance, let's say let's enter in square root of 2, put square root of 2, press enter, and look what it did. It put it right in decimal form. Now, I can't just put leave that in my calculator. I have to write right up under this number what that decimal is. And I'll just stop at the hundreds place. 1.41. Next number is 2.1. That's the decimal. Pretty easy. Put it in and press enter. Next is negative square root of 4. So I'm going to put that in negative square root of 4. Press enter. And it turned into negative 2. So I'm just turning these numbers that I don't know the value of, turn them into a decimal. Uh, next number, 0, enter. And the next would be negative 3 over 2. And it gave me negative 1.5. Now, this is for you. Whenever you end up ordering these guys, you have to know what these decimals are representing because remember, in your answer choices, they're not going to be in decimal form. They're going to be in the form that your question gave it to you. All right. So once I've entered in the numbers, I push that again, put going to stat, and now it's going to go back here. Now, this is one of the tricky parts if i want to go 
or order these numbers from least to greatest, which this first set of numbers we wanted from least to greatest. I have to click on sort A. Sort A will order these numbers from least to greatest. I, I just go down, press enter, and now I have sort A. Now, this your calculator is asking you, okay, what do you want to order from least to greatest? This is where we go to step number five. All right, we're going to put second because we're trying to get back to our list, our list of numbers. We're going to go to second, list one. Okay, second list. Everybody see list right there? List. And I'm going to press one because the list that we made earlier was in L1. So I'm going to press one and enter. Now, when it says enter, when I press enter, it will say done. That means it calculated everything you need to calculate. So guess what? I need to go back to see. Did it list them correctly? So I press stat one and look at there. To put them in order from least to greatest. So negative two. What is negative two? Square root of four. Negative square root of four. Negative 1.5. What is that? Negative three over two. And I have zero. 1.41 is the square root of two. Again, this is why you have to write down what the decimal numbers represent. And then lastly is 2.1. And I have my answer right there. Now, if I want to clear this to go to the next one, all I have to do is arrow up to L1. I'm going to press clear and then enter. And the list is gone. And you're ready for the next one. All right. Again, very simple, simple steps. But for me, this step four is going to be one of the ones that a lot of people have trouble with because you have to remember sort A. We'll, lead, we'll order them from least to greatest, and sort D will order from greatest to least. So let's do another one. All right. So now I have pi. I have 0 0.1. I have square root of 13, fraction 3 over 7, and 2. First off, I'm going to put stat. I'm already there. I'm going to enter in each number. Okay, pi. I'm going to go to second. Powerhouse button right there. Press enter. Turns into a decimal. We should all know what that is. 3.14. I have 0 0.1. And the square root of 13. I don't know the value of the square root of 13, so that is one I have to write down. It gets me to 3.6. I'll just stop right there. Then we have 3 over 7. Let's put that in. Again, I don't know the value of a fraction, so I have to turn it into a decimal. 0. 0.43. I'll just round it up. 0. 0.43. And then I have 2. I didn't need to write that down. Don't worry about that. All right, so I've turned everything that I don't know the value of into a decimal. All right, so we're good. Once I put that in, all right, now I have to go back to stat, and now look what we're doing. We're ordering from greatest to least. So I need to go to sort D, and what do I want to, store, to sort from greatest to least? Well, I need to go to second list. My list is right there. One, because that's where my list is. Press enter, and now I'm done. <clears throat> Now I need to go back to that list. I go to stat. I press one. And look what it did. It ordered it for me from greatest to least. Now, again, if you are not writing down what these irrational numbers or fractions are in decimal form, you are going to be confused on your answer. Again, make it easier for you for yourself by turning these irrational numbers into decimals. So 3.6, that was square root of 3. 
I mean a 13. My next one was 3.14. That's pi. Next is 2. Uh, 0.43, which was 3 over 7, and then 0 0.1. And there goes my answer right there. <clears throat> All right, so again, these steps, guys, will help a lot of you out. Again, I always talk about the skills that are questions that we cannot miss, and these are one of them. And, and you know, some people have trouble. Some people have trouble with um, ordering numbers, especially negative numbers. So, again, if I'm learning something that's going to help me, where I don't even have to order them myself, I'm going to focus on these steps. Now, got one more thing to talk about. If you get a mixed number, all right, so for instance, let's say four and one fourth, okay? If I want to put this in my calculator, all right, if I want to put this in my list, let's say I want to put this in four and Look what happens when I try to put this in as four and one fourth. Four and one fourth. I'll put it in parentheses. All right. What it's going to do is it will not calculate a mixed number. All right. I put four and one fourth in parentheses, and it just thought that I was multiplying four times one fourth, and it gave me one. All right. So the thing about a mixed number, guys, you have to turn this fraction into a decimal first, all right? That's the only way that you will be able to order a mixed number on your calculator, all right? So I can't try to put four and one-fourth in. I have to turn this into a decimal, which gives me 4.25, and now I can put it in my calculator with no errors, all right? So, again, don't be thinking of, I will never learn this, all right? You'll have plenty of practice. And again, if, if you know you struggle with this, make sure that you are paying attention and trying to remember this because it's gonna help you in the long run. Some of the questions that on our benchmark, some people miss these type of questions. If you can take these questions, because there will be a few of them, and get them right, again, the better opportunity you will have in making sure that you have your goal. All right? So um, you got a practice coming up. Make sure that on every practice, again, or every question that you are turning these irrational numbers or numbers that you don't know the value of into decimals. All right? So go get your uh, practice and we'll be coming around to check.